Floaters are those stringy dots, lines, and cobwebs that can get in the way of your vision. They can be really annoying, but they can also be kind of alarming, especially if you have a really big one or a bunch of new ones that showed up all at once. So how do you know if they're a problem and what can you do about it? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you about what can be done to treat floaters, including some potential natural options. By the end of the video, I think you'll be a lot more comfortable with what's going on and what your options are. So let's get started. Let me start this video by saying if you're noticing a sudden increase in floaters, especially if they're accompanied by flashes of light or changes in vision like blind spots, blurry vision, or it looks like a curtain is closing over your vision, you need to call your eye doctor right now. There could be something going on in the retina and that's really serious and can lead to vision loss very quickly. So even if it's a night or a weekend, go ahead and give their on-call service a call and speak to someone about what you're experiencing. Perhaps you already saw your eye doctor and they told you, well, it's just because of your age and everything looks fine, you'll get used to it leaving you feeling kind of wanting more or maybe still concerned because you still don't really know what's going on. Well, what's happening is a totally natural change inside of the vitreous gel. And this is what I'll be focusing on in this video. That means that the retina is healthy and we don't need to worry about that. And yes, this is something that worsens with age. Our eye is filled with a gel and over time this gel becomes a little bit more liquidy and the collagen within the gel starts to clump together and this casts shadows onto the retina which are those floating little shadows that you see. They can be really annoying but fortunately they do tend to fade and before you click off hang on a moment and let me explain why that can be. So the getting used to it is kind of true. And this is why just observing the floaters is the mainstay of treatment for floaters, which basically means we choose to monitor without doing any intervention. And there's good reason behind that. And you'll hear more about that when you hear what interventions are currently available in just a moment. But what's going on is that we tend to learn to ignore or get used to these floaters. And they also tend to migrate or fade over time. They settle with time and gravity and can move out of the way a little bit. And a lot of it has to do with neuroadaptation. Our brains are trained to notice stimulus amongst the noise. That way we can pay attention to what's important. So if there's something that's always present in our vision, it tends to fade with time. And that is because the brain wants us to see what is important and it knows those floaters have been around a while and starts to ignore them. So it's not just you consciously thinking about ignoring them. A lot of this happens subconsciously without you having to do any work at all. That being said, that reminds us not to fixate on the floaters. Now that we know the retina and everything in the eye is healthy, we need to start to learn to relax when it comes to these floaters. A lot of people, especially if they have really large floaters, tend to really stress about them and be really bothered by them. But kind of the more you think about them, the more you notice them. And this is why other things can make floaters more noticeable. Even simple things like being stressed out or it just being the end of the day and you're tired or the eyes being dry. These are all things that draw your attention to your eyes something that you should be using automatically without thinking about it. And so treating and managing those other things that draw your attention to those floaters can really help to make them less noticeable. On that note, don't try to erase your floaters by vigorously rubbing at the eyes. Okay, that's not going to help. That's just going to agitate the gel within the eye making them more noticeable. So I'm sure you're wondering what can be done. I don't wanna just observe this. My floaters are really, really bothersome and there's one right in the middle of my vision that's driving me crazy. Well, there are treatments available. Laser vitreolysis is an option. This is where a laser is used to zap those large floaters to break them up into smaller ones that will hopefully settle more easily or be less obstructive to your vision. Now this is a little bit tough because there's not a great objective way to look at the vitreous before and after the procedure. It's something that's really hard to study and there aren't that many studies on it. 
Some people uh, really like it and feel like their vision has improved while others are neutral and some are bothered or wish they hadn't done it. This is a really important one to have a deep conversation with your doctor about how much is it affecting your life? How much is it affecting your vision? Is your quality of life reduced? Are you having trouble doing your daily activities that you love to do because of these floaters before you decide to have this or any procedure. And that's important really for any other procedure outside of floaters as well. Another option for those with those really robust floaters would be a vitrectomy where incisions are made in the sclera and micro instruments are used to surgically remove the vitreous gel and replace it with a clear solution. Because of the more invasive nature of this procedure, complications are a little bit more likely like retinal detachments or conditions that can affect the central vision that even if treated right away might leave central vision blurry or a little distorted. These would be cystoid macular edema or an epiretinal membrane. They just cause an irregular shape to the macula right responsible for that central vision. This is what makes it so important to have a frank discussion with your doctor about how bothersome those floaters are versus the risks of the procedures and if it's going to be worth it in the long run for you. It can be really difficult to know what to do, so it's not something to take lightly, definitely something that you want to think about hard before you make your decision. As it stands, eye drops for floaters do not exist. Think about it this way. The vitreous gel is inside of the eye. It's made up of 98% water, and the other 2% is mostly collagen, and hyaluronic acid. These collagen clumps and cellular debris are what cause these floaters. And let's compare this to the wrinkles caused by aging. Okay, we know that's because of changes in collagen. And no matter how much you spend on a beauty product, it is very hard to find one that actually reduces or especially reverses wrinkles. This is just a natural change that's happening to the body. As much as we'd like to stop it or reverse it, even putting something directly on the skin isn't working. So how could putting an eye drop work all the way in the gel that's inside of the eye? It's very difficult for a drop to actually penetrate all of the parts of the eye to get to the gel. And then even if it reaches it, how do we know that it's going to improve it? Okay, so if you hear people raving online that they used an eye drop that's magically improved their floaters, I would be really skeptical because we don't have any proof that any eye drops work at this point in time. Think about earlier in the video how I was talking about how floaters are more noticeable when you're thinking about them or when your eyes are dry. Well, a lot of people will use eye drops which will improve their dry eye and reduce them thinking about their floaters and they'll seem to improve. Also, there's a lot to be said about the placebo effect. And we've known this for years. That's why when we study things, we have a placebo to compare it to. So we know that it's not just in our heads, especially with something that can be as psychological more or less as floaters. We want to be sure that we're not just being so hopeful that it feels like the floaters have improved thanks to the eye drops. Remember, floaters tend to fade and migrate over time. Before you consider me a total skeptic, I want you to know that I myself live very naturally based, and I'm always on the lookout for ways that patients' eye health can be improved by diet and exercise and changing their lifestyle, and you'll notice this in some of my other videos but I feel like it's my duty to inform you about what has been proven because otherwise you could be wasting your money and your time and possibly even worst of all, you could be setting yourself up for disappointment that comes after false hope. It's important to me to provide objective information and I don't benefit in any way from laser vitriolysis or vitrectomies. I don't do those procedures. And I also don't benefit from the sale of vitamins or pineapples. You should always see who is telling you that information and could they be financially benefiting from it and really think about what the underlying research is and think about that before you invest a lot of time and money in potentially empty promises.
That being said, there are some newer things in the research that are more naturally based that may help improve eye floaters, but do they actually work? Since you're watching this on YouTube, you've probably heard that pineapple is being considered as a possible way to improve or treat floaters because of the enzyme it contains, bromelain, because it can break down large proteins, collagen in this case, and there have been some studies that have been done based out of Taiwan where people have taken pineapple daily and of various amounts, and they've noticed improvement in floaters in people who have eaten pineapple every day for 90 days, and even more improvement in those who eat more pineapple rather than less. Um, but these studies are wanting for greater numbers. Okay, the smaller the study is, the less reliable it is. And also there was no placebo group to compare it to. So again, we wonder about that placebo effect and if these floaters were just fading over time like they tend to do. So if this is a way to go about treating them, great. You know, pineapple is an excellent fruit. I love it. If you want to eat more of it, all that power to you. I don't think it's going to be harmful. It would be great to have more studies about this in the future, and I hope that it works so I can start recommending it more to people, but just with a little bit more research backing up that recommendation. Other more naturally based options would include a supplement called Vitreous Health. The various ingredients in this formulation aim to either reduce collagen clumping or have antioxidant properties. While the goals of these ingredients are all well and good, we're left wondering whether those ingredients can make it all the way to the eye. There is a blood retinal barrier that can make it difficult for things to go from the bloodstream to the target tissue. And if it reaches the target tissue, is it going to work? This is why it takes many, many years for medications to be approved by the FDA in the United States. And while supplements do not have to go through such a rigorous process, they still are regulated. So the study of this did show improvement in those who took the supplement versus those who did not. And yes, there was a placebo group in this one, but it was a smaller study, which makes us again wonder if a larger study would have the same results. Plus two authors of the study are listed as inventors in the product. So I'm going to wait until larger studies are completed by a third party to get really excited about this one. There are even more treatment options, whether procedure-based or more natural, that are currently being studied. So hopefully we'll have more options in the future. For now, we'll just have to keep an eye out. What I really hope you take from this is that unless your floaters are related to some sort of retinal problem or underlying issue, they're not a progressive disease that's actively damaging the eye or going to cause irreversible vision loss. Okay, at any point, we always have that option of a vitrectomy to remove it if they're really, really bothering the vision. But if there's nothing else underlying going on, they are simply vitreous floaters. I think that's why doctors tend to be so flippant about it, just saying, ah, it's just related to your age. The eye is healthy, everything is looking good. I think you should always explain what and why things are going on so that people are at greater ease. But I think that's why doctors tend to be so chill about it because we know it's not damaging any important structures of the eye. Uh, but I do hope that this helps to calm some of your nerves surrounding floaters and you know, gives you some information about what's currently available and what may be available in the future. The final truth of the matter is that I think the majority of people, even with the technology that's available today, will go the route of just observing the floaters. And there's nothing wrong with that because you can always decide to treat at any point in time. But usually it's best to at least see if things settle before making the decision to treat. I hope you enjoyed the video and that I answered some questions for you. If you wanna watch more, I would recommend this one over here or these right here. Thanks for watching.